was standing on the roof of the Woolworth building on the 56th floor looking out the tower to see what happened. And the next thing I did, I seen a spot in the air, another plane came down and a circle, I kind of went off a little bit and then it straightened itself out and dove to the other side and crashed right in and the explosion was so terrific it looked like it had dynamite in it. The ball of fire that came flying out of that one was even worse than the first one. And we were standing there and I said, I can't believe this. And sure enough, there it was, another plane. The plane wasn't no uh, airline or anything, it was a twin engine, big gray plane. About uh, from here down, you know, maybe down to that yellow thing. Two motors, two big propellers. And it went, when it went in there, it dove right in. Few, a few feet away from it. I never seen anything like it. I, I wouldn't believe that if I was so close. When you're on this building on the 56th floor, you feel like you could touch them buildings. One building fell down when I was down there. You don't want to be next to it.
Ryan Battalion, he knows. You need anybody with emergency medical experience? I, the estimate is we probably lost 200 firefighters. Oh my God. And God knows how many, how many thousands of you can. Okay. So you want me to wait right here? Okay. Multiple spot. Okay. And stay away from any other high rise building. Okay. okay. down on me. Here it comes. I'm getting behind a car. I just buried him sick. I'm sorry I came down. I just had to help these but I should have known the second moment ago. Oh god. It is black as night and then outside in broad daylight. I just came and got down behind the car. You know, I can see a tiny bit. This is incredible. Okay, I'm gonna have to go find people who need help. I don't think I'm one of them. You okay, sir? Okay. Can I just get a toot off your respirator? Can I get a toot? I'm seeing a couple of team breaths. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay. Back to you. There's all these noises, I think, it, I don't know what it is. They say someone needs help. Yeah, Mike! Mike! Come over here! Are you okay? Yeah! Anybody need a doctor? Don't have oxygen. Oh, man. Can you Hello, Doc. Hey, that guy needs some oxygen. If someone can share it with him. 10-4. Thanks.
on it, on the left, on the left, on the left, where the smoke is. wants you to go over there.
to run those floors that were hit for by it, uh, it will be miraculous. All of our recorders are in route. This shit came from over there. <laughs> Thank you. 
tape. And I'll have it soon. <laughs> Whatever it costs you, let me know. In fact, I have it to hook up. Hey, that's where he has his command center, doesn't it? That's where you come in. Everybody wants to see. I know, she's going to have a rat and kill us all. I know. I've been taking. The other building just fell. I know. I, I saw it on TV. I thought it was like an instant replay of the first one. The second one fell too? The second one just fell down. Spots so far. And I don't think there should be any question about that. Somebody also said that they heard that President Bush is somewhere here in New York. NBC4, the Tri-State News Channel. And now, Chuck Scarborough, Sue Simmons, Janice Huff, and Len Berman. This is News Channel 4 at 11. Tonight you will see video of the Trade Towers attack never before shown in public. The view from a hotel window and why is crucial to the war on terror. But first, breaking news out of Westchester. Chopper 4 is live over the scene where six people become suddenly and violently ill under what is being described. And thank you. When a jury is chosen for the first World Trade Towers terrorism trial, they will probably view the videotape you are about to see. It's a view of the attack shot from a hotel window. Tim Minton explains why it's such an important piece of evidence. But you know how close we were just to being killed? To Tammy Michaels, who used to live in California, it first felt like an earthquake. Only about 100 yards separated the Twin Towers from her 35th floor hotel room across the street. I just couldn't, I couldn't get my brain to wrap around the fact that either something had hit the Trade Center or that it actually exploded. It was really incomprehensible. For me, it was just this huge explosion and our building shook from it. And I thought, 93, World Trade Center, there's been another bomb. That's Tammy's husband, Guy Rossbrook. He's a top executive of an internet company. She's a Seattle radio talk show host and interior designer. When the first plane hit September 11th, Guy got out an unused new digital camera. 
<laughs> Look at the building is on fire. Oh my god, there's people in there. Oh my god. The tape, which lasts 28 minutes, was turned over by Tammy Michaels to federal prosecutors and the FBI Wednesday in a secret meeting at this Midtown hotel. Federal agents had previously told the couple that the government wanted the tape to use at the trial of Zacharias Musawi, the so-called 20th hijacker. On the video, they begin to see, but we are not going to show you now, people jumping from the doomed buildings. It's so close, the camera can see the victim's outfits. Oh, no, there's a person, Tammy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's precisely that reaction and those pictures, which have never been shown on television, that former federal prosecutor Dan Richmond says the government will want the Musawi jury to see. This tape brings home, in a way that other tapes don't, how awful this really was. And why didn't the couple from Seattle get out with other hotel guests? I'm thinking it's it's going to be dangerous. There's a real risk if that tower collapsed, that we're on the street, that we could die. But then the Twin Towers come down. A falling, flaming beam actually sets the couple's hotel on fire. As a smoky haze clouds their windows and viewfinder, they finally flee. God, course, we are so blessed. But for those who survived September 11th, and the families of those who didn't, there are continuing nightmares. Both Tammy Michaels and Guy Rosbrook say they've started taking sleeping pills. They hope helping prosecutors will also help themselves and other 9-11 families to ease some of the pain. Tim Minton, News Channel 4. A ceremony of remembrance and gratitude is going to be held at Ground Zero May 30th. It will mark the official end of the recovery effort there. Rob Morrison is live.